employees do you currently have? In the United States? Yes. Well, no, actually, you know what? It, it, that was originally my question, but, but since we're dealing with Arkansas, how many employees do you have in Arkansas it would probably be more appropriate? About 24,000, sir. About 24,000. Uh, are you, and with your, with your focus on, on the health care of, of your the employer, it's, surely you've looked into some of the side effects of the vaccines itself. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, that with young, pe young men in particular, um, there's a heart condition, I don't remember what it's called, that, that pops up. There's all sorts of other potential side effects. And, and I'd say that most people will call them rare, right? They're not, they're not something that is real common. Exceedingly rare is my understanding, sir. Have you assessed how many of your employees are likely to fall in that category? Uh, before a team member would receive the vaccine, they are asked a series of questions by the vaccine provider that would identify if they're contraindication for them taking the vaccine. We encourage all of our team members to speak to their doctor if they have any concerns about taking the vaccine based on any of their current medical conditions. Sure, that's standard procedure, procedure anytime you get the vaccine. And still yet, there are a lot of people who have experienced side effects. Is that correct? Uh, my understanding is that uh, severe side effects are exceedingly rare. Right. Have, have you assessed out of the 24,000 how many people you think will end up with, because of this mandate, will end up with um, one of these side effects? I, I Hold wouldn't. on just a moment. Uh, Mr. Brown, could you pull your mic closer? Some of our members are having a hard time hearing. Yes, sir. Is that Thank better? You. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. What, what we, Senator, what we have assessed is that the risk of catching COVID-19 is far outweighs any of the side effects that are remotely possible that a team member could experience. The, the danger of catching COVID-19 is far greater, uh, it is our understanding, than any side effects of the vaccine. Okay, but did you quantitate it? Did you ever actually come down with a hard number of how many serious side effects you expect out of 24,000 people? No, sir, I don't have a, a number like that. What, what I do know is this. This is, what I know is that 99% 99, 99 of the people that are hospitalized with severe illness are unvaccinated. What I know is that 94% in ICU are unvaccinated. What I know is that 95% of the elderly with COVID-19 in the hospitals are unvaccinated. And what I know is that we have determined that vaccination is the single most effective way to protect the health of our team members, their families, and the communities where we operate. That, that's based on the therapeutic effect of the vaccination, right? I mean, you agree with Dr. Fauci and the CDC that now says that it's, it's not likely to, I mean, maybe even not even mitigate the spread, but it, it certainly is not, doesn't eliminate the spread of the virus. Is that correct? I am aware that if a breakthrough case were to occur, that the likelihood of severe illness in that person is even far more unlikely with COVID-19. Right, but you agree and that the spread itself is if there is any any mitigation or limitation on the spread, that it's it's minimal. That that I mean, I think that all the the agreed science now tends to ar argue that it's therapeutic, that it, it prevents from hospitalizations, but it doesn't. I mean, which which we've seen evidence with ha what's happened in Massachusetts, what's going on in Israel right now, what's going on in every other place that that early on did the vaccination where they're having spikes, right? I mean, you, you're, not, you're not arguing with that fact, correct? Um, the facts, as I understand, are that the vaccine is highly effective at preventing se severe illness. And when the approval was given for the vaccine, it was Pfizer and Moderna were in the 90% range, and the Jensen vaccine was in the 70% range of preventing transmission or catching uh, COVID-19. Yet you would agree they're not saying that anymore, correct? That that's, that is old data, and they are not claiming that it's 90% effective to stop the spread. Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware that uh, they have come out with a different number, Senator.
<laughs> and I, 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 and we definitely need to, to move on and let other people do things, but don't you think you should be aware if you're going to continue, if you are, and, and I appreciate your concern for protecting the workers who, a bunch of those are my constituents, but don't you think you should be aware of the latest science on it? And I'm not talking about, you know, some wacko on Facebook. I'm talking about Dr. Fauci, CDC, who will say that it doesn't, it's no longer, the focus is no longer on preventing the spread. It's purely therapeutic. And, and the fact that, like in Israel, the, the numbers are going through the roof of, of people who are hospitalized who actually have had the vaccine. I mean, that's why they're talking about a booster. I mean, I think, like, it, it isn't an imperative on you to kind of be up to date on the science, if you're going to go out and you're going to require your people, in spite of the potential side effects that you agree, that you stay is possible, that they should know about that? Senator, I do believe that I'm informed. Okay. And uh, what I said was I'm not aware that they have revised their efficacy numbers for the vaccine, and I'm not here to debate the efficacy numbers for the vaccine. We have been advised that vaccination is the single most important item that we can do to protect the health and safety of our team members. You are providing a religious exemption, is that correct, for, for members? Yes, sir. Individuals that come forward with a medical or religious concern can provide for an accommodation. How, how do you? How are you going through that? Mr. Soldier, we are going to have to move on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Back it, that's my last question. How are you doing that? How are you going to handle that administratively? Uh, we will evaluate those uh, cases as they come to us. I'm, I'm sorry. Who who will and how will they? Under what standard? How will the cases be evaluated? Right. Like who is who is going to do it? And what is the standard for evaluating it? The professionals within Tyson Foods, they are referred to human resources through our normal accommodation process, and they will follow their normal accommodation process to determine uh, accommodations. Thank you. Senator Stubblefield. 